Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm running the street and today we are installing Slackware Linux on a Dell Dimension 3000 after I wasted multiple hours trying to get Arch Linux to work. Basically, Arch was giving me some some error messages that according to the people on the internet don't exist, but they were happening on my computer, so with that I say, screw Arch Linux, uh, we're going to move on, try and install Slackware, which, I mean, Slackware has a book, Arch Linux is supposed to be revered for having great documentation though, so I'm a little worried about installing Slackware, uh, it, you've got to pretty much know how to be kind of technical and look things up when you don't know how to do something. Uh, so basically, if you know how to use Google, then you can probably do this at home. I thought about trying to do, like, FreeBSD again, but uh, we all remember what I think about BSD. So, yeah, we are going to stick with Linux, and we are going to install Slackware right now. Why did I just get up? Uh, we're not using a CD for this. Unfortunately, unlike Arch, Slackware actually, uh, you need it on a DVD, or if you use CDs, you have to have more than one CD, and I don't want to use more than one CD for this. You know, I already wasted one on Arch, right here, which might be my next cup holder, just saying, because I'm really freaking annoyed at, at that, but I won't bore you. Uh, we are going to grab UNet boot in. Oh, by the way, just for the record, um, I do say, I, I make jokes sometimes about people using Linux as an excuse uh, for having BitTorrent on their computer, but I did download Slackware, a 2.3 gigabyte file I downloaded over BitTorrent, um, so that means that other people who used Slackware or who downloaded Slackware were seeding it and uploading it to me. And now that I'm done downloading it, as you can see, uh, once again, just for the record, I do have the torrent program still open and it is uploading to other people like me who are downloading Slackware right now. So that is how BitTorrent works. It is the same people who download it, upload it. And so I just downloaded it, now I'm uploading it. And that's how you make an online community that works. So I will let you know as soon as UNet boot in, uh, which is the program I use to put Linux ISOs onto flash drives, uh, I'll let you know when that's done. It's at like 10% right now, so it might take a little bit. Alrighty, let's bring our tripod on back here and we'll point it straight at the CRT. Now I know you guys are not big fans of the camera pointed at the CRT situation. However, uh, I, I figure you'd rather see me installing something that I'm actually going to use rather than doing it in a virtual machine just to show you how. Um, I'm actually going to be using this computer for uh, not even actually web browsing, more like web monitoring. Like uh, whenever I'm doing live streams, I'll pull up the live stream on this computer so that I can use the other one to look stuff up and do whatever I need to. Um, so not exactly like day-to-day -day web browsing because it's not even very powerful for that. Uh, but I will be using this computer for like monitoring of my own website. All right, so you can see me in the reflection there. Uh, I've got the flash drive that we will be using, so I will plug that in now. I'm going to hit the power button again. All right. This time I'm hitting F12. All right, there we go. I want to make sure we're booted into that uh, USB flash device. There we go. All right, good. So we will boot into default, I guess. Alrighty, there we go. Looks like we are uh, starting to get worried there, but it looks like we are booting. Um, so I am at the Slackware book right now. If you're not using the US keyboard, all right, to continue using the US map, just hit enter. Uh, you may now log in as root. Root. All right, we are logged in as root. So, um, Okay, mount your Linux partitions under slash mount. Okay, this is nice that it tells you what to do on the terminal itself. I am reading the Slack book over here at slackbook.org. But yeah, it's nice that it tells us sort of what to do. So the first thing we'll want to do is partition. So fdisk slash dev. I'm really confused. I'm pretty sure it's SDA, but we're going to try HDA. No HDA. All right. 
So it is slash dev slash SDA. Um, so first thing you should do is examine. All right, see, we have something right here. All right, delete all the partitions on this drive. So D, partition one is deleted, yay. Create one for a root file system and one for swap. Yep, make partitions with the in command. I didn't know that the in command, this is not how we did it on Arch Linux, but that's all right. In primary, partition one, first sector, last sector, for M. Ah, all right. So type T to t change type uh, 82. All right, good. Next, we will do new partition, primary, two, first sector, and last sector will go all the way to the end of the disk. So now if we type P, yeah, see we've got, yeah, start, end, and then that starts there and ends at the end of the disk. Yay. So then we will type W to write, correct? Yep. Uh, cool. So now we will go to setup, type setup, and we've got a menu. Yay! Much better than Arch already because we have a menu. Uh, this is sort of like Debian's menu in that it's a menu, not really in anything else. So the setup process, you can go through each option. We don't really need to read the help file, I don't think. Key map, we don't need to remap that because we're using a US keyboard. Um, add swap, yeah, let's do that. Um, Pre-selected to be set up as swap space. So space, all right, cool. Enter, so default, would you like to check for bad blocks? Nah, let's not do that. So we are now activating that. All right, cool. Your swap space has been configured. All right. Uh, select Linux installation. So now it's going through the menus. It's not making me reselect the menu. It's just going through the menus one by one. Uh, so we want this partition to be selected. All right. If this partition is not formatted, you should format it. I think it's formatted. Nah, let's go ahead and format it. And let's do that too. Let's do the slow one. Uh, okay, we want ext4. Formatting, yay. Let me take the camera out of the tripod. Now you can see, um, and this is why I like using uh, real computers rather than the virtual machine, you can see that the physical hard drive light is on. That's the power light. This is the hard drive activity light, which normally is not solid on like that, but right now it is because we're kind of partitioning it. And I just took two screenshots on my phone. That's wonderful. And I actually will let you guys know when this is done. Alrighty, that took a few minutes there. Uh, like, took a little bit of, took significant time. Let me refocus the camera here. I guess that's a little better. Uh, let me switch back to our installation guide. There we go. Um, Adding this information to your FSTAB, that's great. Partitions of type FAT or NTFS. Why? There's not more than one hard drive in this computer. Okay, we're just going to do that. Uh, okay, all right. All right, so now we'll continue doing what we were going to do. Install from a Slackware uh, CD or DVD. Ooh. We're gonna go with CD or DVD for now. Wait, cancel. I like how we clicked cancel, but it's going to do it anyway. Okay. Source. USB stick. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, so the USB drive was the NTFS drive that it found. All right. Yeah, we didn't need to do that. Anyway, um... Time select which general categories of software to install. Base Linux system, so base Linux system, yeah. Uh, applications that don't require X, yes. Compilers, debuggers, programming tools. I think we'll do that just in case we need it. Emacs, sure. I, I prefer Nano, but uh, documentation, yeah. Kernel source, sure. All right, so KDE looks to be the default desktop environment, and that's fine. I would like to use KDE. So um, we don't need international languages. System libraries, we do want. Networking, we definitely want. 
Tax we don't really use. We'll keep it though. Uh, this was supposed to be a sort of um, a minimal install, but we're just going to select everything that it tells us to or recommends, um, which is almost everything possible. So next, full install everything. Yeah, we're going to do that. All right, full installation mode. Install all software packages. So it is now installing everything, and it's going to go through every single package it's installing, I believe. Luckily, we don't have to download those like Arch did. We are just installing it all straight from the flash drive. I don't mean to, like, be comparing Slackware to Arch. It's just Arch did not work. So I'm excited to see if Slackware does work or not. I actually did not expect Slackware to come with a desktop environment. Like, Arch did not come with a desktop environment. Um, and I couldn't install one because networking wouldn't work. It looks like Slackware actually comes with KDE, though. So that's going to be great if I actually just boot up and it's in KDE. All right, it looks like we installed Lilo, the Linux loader, not Grub. Although I thought we were doing Grub, so I don't know if anyone else saw that there or not. All right, so that was just the base series. Now we're going through the next one. I'll just let you guys know when this part's done too. So it just said done installing Linux packages or something like that. Now it's doing this stuff. Uh, make font scale and make font directory. Looks like, uh, back to the installing book. Alrighty, so next it should have us configure some things as Linux uh, installers usually do have you configure things after or while you're copying files over. I like how I'm recording in 1080p. And I made sure it was at 1080p this time, yet we're pointing at a CRT. All right. Uh, if your computer supports booting from a USB device, uh, it is recommended that you make a USB boot stick. Uh, no. Well, I mean, my computer does support booting from a USB boot stick, but the problem with that would be that I'm booting from it right now, so I can't erase that. Uh, skip making a boot disk. Um... Let's try and install Lilo. It is Lilo, Linux loader, uh, which is weird because normally it's Grub that is installed. Um, use the standard Linux console. Optional. Just hit enter. No is the safe choice here. Master boot record. Okay. Cool. That's weird. I like it's cool. I've never I've read about Linux loader. Uh, but I've never actually used it before, so this will be interesting. Um, you can choose... Alright. Uh, please select a mouse type from the list below. Just gonna go with PS2 then. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. Would you like to configure your network? Yes, please. Uh, we need the host name right now. So, um, Slack PC. Now we need the domain name for this machine. I will just do, like, work group. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, DHCP. Right. So I think I'm going to try DHCP, although it didn't work last time. Network manager usually works. Let's do network manager. Uh, your networking system is configured to use network manager. Uh, yes. Add the network management control panel widget to your KDE desktop. We will remember to do that. Next, the selected services will be started at boot time. Um, right, I don't think we need any of that other stuff. Recommended choices have been pre-selected, so that's good. So yeah, we're not using this as a, our email server or anything. We'll just continue everything. Uh, would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? No. Uh, is the hardware clock set to universal time? No. Select your time zone, US Central. Uh, select the default uh, window manager to use. KDE, please. Warning, no root password detected. Would you like to set a root password? Yes. New password. Too bad you can't see what I'm typing. All right. Sweet. Control alt delete. Okay, we are now rebooting. This is cool. So now we will... Hit F12 a couple times to boot into our hard drive. And if this works, then I am going to be really impressed. Oh, so it's it's going... Oh, wait, Linux. All right. 
So this is Lilo. This is just a logo. This is actually the selection, and then it's going to wait a whole two minutes uh, before it auto boots. But yeah, we will just hit enter over Linux. Uh, decompressing Linux. Sweet. If this works, like I said, going to be super duper impressed. Although I just saw an error somewhere, but I mean, when do you not see errors when you're starting up Linux? That's normal, right? Like I'm not the only person in the world who sees an error every time they start up Linux. All right, Slack PC login. Um, so. All right, well, I'm going to log in as root. Uh, start X. That's not actually in the manual to do that. I just guessed that. Mouse works. And if this actually launches KDE, then I'm going to be a happy camper. Because that would have been way easier than I thought this would be. Okay, we've got our hard drive is writing some stuff right now. I know KDE is not the most lightweight thing in the world, but I have run KDE on this computer before, if I've not mentioned that yet. Um, network Manager, it looks like Network Manager is already in here. Networking interface is connected. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We've got Conquer for some reason in the toolbar or in the taskbar, the auto launch thing twice. Not sure why. But this is actually working. So if we launch our web browser, all I want to see, for some reason we don't have the desktop module here. Um, you know, normally you have desktop icons like in a box there. Even if you have no icons, the box is normally there, the widget. But like if we go to, I guess nerdofthestreet.com wouldn't be a very smart thing to try. Uh, what if we go to youtube.com slash nerd on the street? Does it work? Oh my god, that actually worked. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, that, that right there. Oh, and Flash is installed already? Are you kidding? Oh, no, it's the HTML5 player. All right, I don't even care. Uh, that was really freaking easy. Um, everyone, like I said, this was Slackware Linux. So Slackware is a great place to start if you want to learn about advanced usage of Linux. Um, if you in, learn how to use like Red Hat or like SUSE or something, you learn how to use Red Hat or SUSE. But if you learn how to do Slackware, you learn Linux itself. Um, so yeah, Slackware is one of the oldest distros, I believe, of Linux. Um, so yeah, that is really cool that we got that set up. Very much easier than Arch Linux. Uh, at least personally for me, it was. And yeah, it's got a semi, it does not have a graphical installer, but it was not uh, console based. So at least there's that if you're uh, willing to, or if you're afraid of the console, this is a nice in between that it's still text based, but you've got menus and things. So yeah, um, I guess, yeah, slackbook.org is what I used to follow the instructions to install this. Um, so you can go there if you're still worried and you think you need more help. But yeah, that's how to install a basic Slackware system with KDE. And you can do that on an older computer like this one. And now this is a basic web browsing computer. I can check my email on there or do whatever I want to on there. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any other uh, requests for me to do in videos. But yeah, for now, that's all I have. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm Nerd of the Street, and I will see you guys later. See ya.